Hi everyone, welcome to Inspiration Ministries. I'm David Chadwick. I'm trying to help all of us understand how to answer this very difficult question, why is there suffering in the world? If God is good, why is there suffering? And there are some biblical answers. Let's turn to God's Word to try to find some of those answers today. When God created this world, He created it with a fourfold harmony uh, between us and Himself, among ourselves, thirdly, within ourselves, and fourthly, with creation. When Jesus came after this disruption of disharmony where no longer there's a relationship with God, where no longer do we love one another like we should, no longer is there peace, love, and joy, and harmony in our hearts, and now creation's gone awry, Jesus came to restore all of those things. In Acts 1, 6, He said He came to restore the kingdom of God. That's another term for original intent. God's kingdom, His rule. And Jesus came not only to reestablish our relationship with God through the cross, the forgiveness of our sins, but also to put love in our hearts where the second disharmony is solved, where we start loving one another. Then thirdly, He gives us that love within us that reestablishes God's intent for peace within us. He never desired there to be guilt and shame and depression and discouragement. He wants to fill our hearts with love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. Interestingly, that's the fruit of the Holy Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. There are nine fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. All of those are there. And notice at the end of that, Paul says that these fruit can't be established by the law. Now, what does that mean? It means that this kind of inward peace and love and joy and patience and kindness, etc., can't be established by trying to make it happen, by me saying to you, you just need to be more loving. You need to be more patient. You need to be more kind. All of those kind of things. That doesn't produce the fruit of the Spirit. It simply can't. It's the result of the root of Jesus living within you, then producing that fruit. So the more you focus on abiding in Christ and letting Christ abide in you, the more you allow yourself to be in Jesus completely and Jesus in you completely, that fruit naturally flows forth from your life. And what it does, it reestablishes that which was lost in the garden. It restores that inward peace that God wanted Adam and Eve to have and you and me to have for all of our lives. Jesus said something fascinating in John 14. He said, peace I give to you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Well, the world's understanding of peace is the absence of conflict. For example, if you have two people at odds with one another, they'll try to mediate that and find some kind of peace accord between themselves. When you have two nations at strife with one another, they try to find someone who will come and bring peace between those two nations. But Jesus' peace is an inward peace by His presence. And when His presence is with us and we know that He is in control of everything, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is produced by the natural root of a relationship with Jesus. That's the way Jesus intended to restore the disharmony lost in the garden by our separation from God inwardly. It comes through a relationship with Him that produces all the fruit of the Holy Spirit, especially His peace, not as the world gives. 